When I was an art student in the 1960s, I fancied myself as a bit of a filmmaker. Art's been important to me. It's always been important to me. Film and music as well. And art, film and music blended together. My rebellion was not listening to rock and roll. It was listening to Stravinsky's Right of Spring very loudly on my parents' radiogram and getting told off for it. Somehow Stravinsky got me, not Elvis. My name is Ian Beck. I'm an author and illustrator, and I've been doing that for the last uh, 50 odd years. I was born in 1947 and grew up in a working class household. And my father was a milkman, got up very early every morning, went out on his milk round. So he was home again by lunchtime usually. I had a very happy childhood. There was no money, and there was certainly no indulgences, but I joined my local library when I was seven or eight. And um, that kick-started my obsessive love of uh, reading and books. There were certain illustrations that stood out for me and gave me a, a feeling, a shiver. It was in one of the books I saw a drawing, black and white pen drawing by Pauline Baines for The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Mr. Tumnus out in the forest with the little girl carrying his shopping. And that drawing became a kind of touchstone for me of wanting to, why can't I do things like I want to do things like that. It fired my ambition to, to draw pictures for books. Colour is vital. Colour is everything to me. I love colour. I love laying down a watercolour wash and laying colour upon colour. So when I'm working, I have an outline laid out on my final paper. But I, I then layer the colours in, in thin layers. I might put a red layer down, a blue layer over that, a brown layer over that, another colour, and I build up the density of the washes I want and get the colours balanced. And that it's a, th a thrilling thing playing with colour. Colour changes mood. The colour of the pictures obviously influence the mood, the, the, the feel from the page, if you like. And the colour is absolutely vital to me. I would guess that uh, most people would know the one piece of work that I've done would be the cover, front cover of Elton John's double album, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, which I made in 1973, when I was 26 years old. At that time, there was a general nostalgia for the old Hollywood movies. And it was that kind of mood that I wanted to put in the, the images I made for the cover. So there are obvious references to The Wizard of Oz, for instance, the title of the album, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. The Yellow Brick Road is in The Wizard of Oz. And you'll notice that Elton is wearing a, a very nifty pair of ruby platform boots, which echo Dorothy's ruby slippers in the film. Technically, I would, I would use watercolor, pastels, pencil, colored pencil, blend all three or four items and materials together. So it's kind of mixed media piece, if you like. And I've done that more or less ever since. I mean, recently I had to draw the image, a new version of the image for Elton John's uh, Farewell World Tour, Farewell Yellow Brick Road. So I drew the image again in a slightly different way, but I used the same methods I used before in 1973, which was a strange thing in itself, trying to get back to that younger period. Right now, I'm working on a very strange and interesting project directly for Philip Pullman, an author I've worked with on several books. And we're making something called a Myriorama. A Myriorama is a collection of landscape drawings on cards. And those cards can be arranged in any order to make a continuous landscape. In other words, edge to edge, they join together and make a continuous picture. They're an intriguing set of images and they're fascinating to make. Technically, I work mainly on uh, tracing paper to begin with, roughing things out on tracing paper, then putting that tracing paper underneath another sheet of tracing paper and refining and refining and refining until I get the thing I'm most happy with. I think the figures look right, the balance is correct. 
Then I'd put it on a light box and then I'd draw that through onto my final paper, which would be a sheet of watercolour paper, high quality paper. And then I would draw that in ink on the high quality paper. And then I would tint the colours in with watercolour paint over the top of that. In the present set of cards that I'm making for the My Rearama, I have been drawing black and white pen drawings and tinting them with watercolour. That seems to be the way to go. It has a slightly old fashioned look about it. The old ones, the old My Rama cards were made lithographically, I suspect. And I've tried out very elaborate rough versions first in colour to show Philip and, and to see if he's happy with them. And we've come up with certain changes, so I then redraw it and refine it again until it get, looks right, and then I draw it again. Anything could be art. People, mankind, will always strive to make something of their surroundings, understand the stars, understand life, love. That's what art does. You know, I can't, we wouldn't be human without it, is my feeling. I don't think artists do retire. You make art at whatever stage you are. I'm in my 70s now and I'm still working and I'm very, very happy to be still working. I would hate not to be working. And I think with age comes some sort of wisdom or not necessarily wisdom, but experience. Craft develops. You might end up making images, making things, writing things you never expected to write when you were younger, in your old age. So now I've entered that phase. Thank you.